Used to be if I didn't have a $200 sales day, I was pretty disappointed. Well, that's like long in the past. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. My name is Kevin, we are in the eBay cave. I don't often start in here, but I'm gonna start in here because I have so few sales in here. And I was in here testing VCRs. I'm like, hey, let's just do it right here. And had another good day. You know, it used to be if I didn't have a $200 sales day, I was pretty disappointed. Well, that's like long in the past. Then it was 300. And it looks like lately, if we're not selling 500 bucks worth of stuff, it's not a good day, apparently. Now, it really is. I don't care if I sell 200, it's still a good day. But the sales have been crazy lately for us. And I'm really happy, you know, I used to shoot for that 200 mark part time. You know, I'm a high school history teacher. And so that $200 mark means that I'm making enough money that I don't have to go out and get a second job. My wife doesn't have to go out and get a job. And so my teacher income and my eBay income can make enough money that we don't have to do that stuff. We can spend some time with the family. But this is like crazy money here. Just $500, $600, $700 day sometimes. To be honest with you, I'm a little surprised and I can barely keep up with it at this point. Normally when this happens, I can't get all the shipping out and then I don't have any time to list. So the sales start to go down and it kind of ebbs and flows. And that's where we're at. Our numbers in our eBay store have gone from like 830 down into the 600s because I can't keep up with the new listings because of all the sales, but that's not a problem. I'm actually happy when that happens. You know, there's a little bit more space to move in here and you can process some things as they come in from garage sales. So I'm happy to make these sales and I'm happy to do the shipping and we'll catch up on those listings at some point, I suppose. All right, just a couple things in here and then we'll go out to the Commonwealth cabin. Let's take a look. All right, this little guy's been in this store forever. Sold two things that have been in this store forever. This is the Snoopy Snow Cone Machine Pusher. You know, when in doubt, part it out. And I haven't bought a Snoopy Snow Cone machine in years because this piece was still left. And usually I won't part out an item unless it's a really good profit item. This is not $6.30. It was on sale because it's been in this store so long. Somebody mentioned in one of the garage sale videos on Commonwealth Picker, like, why didn't you pick up this Snoopy Snow Cone machine? I'm like, I wasn't really aware they were selling for a lot of money. They really never have. And I went on there and looked and they really aren't, unless I'm missing something. So if you know something about the old Snoopy Snow Cone machines that I don't, let me know in the comments. But $6.30, parted it out. It's all profit after fees and shipping. It's really not worth it. But I love Snoopy. He's a cool guy. Hey, I have one of the Enemyman going out to Cindy. He says, hello, I watch all your videos. My brakes needed replacing. I worried about the cost. And an hour after I made the appointment, I sold a bottle of perfume on eBay that helped pay for it. I would have never known to pick it up if it hadn't been for you. You're a lifesaver. God bless you and your family. Thank you so much for all your videos. That reminds me here. That's very kind, by the way. It makes me happy to hear things like that. I picked this one up at the flea market at a garage sale video not too long ago. And this guy, I think I have listed for 150. And I just had an offer. Somebody like, hey, I've made offers on this thing, but it just automatically rejects them. How much will you take? And I said 100 bucks. So we're hoping to get 100 bucks out of this one. I paid a dollar for it. So we'll see. I don't suppose that's enough for a new set of brakes, but it, it gets you moving in the right direction, right, Cindy? So, Cindy, thank you so much. We do appreciate it, and we hope he gets things moving <laughs> in the right direction for you. Another shirt that's been hanging around the store a long, long time. Had three items that have been in the store over a year. This one sold today, $10.10. It was on clearance. It was on sale to get it out so it's got that harley design but it's not a harley shirt and it's not in great shape but it sold and it's pure profit it came in a big bundle deal so ten dollars and ten cents i think is what i said so not a lot of money but definitely a little bit and it's out the door i have one going out to Lori. Lori, thank you for the purchase we appreciate it and actually Lori bought this as well so Lori, you must be a viewer and i did not see a message from you so my apologies if you sent one. I don't see one on either of the two sales here, but I, this one works here. I can play it. Holly, Holly Jolly Christmas for a life. We are Santa's elves. I don't know who sings that. Who sings that? And Rudolph, that's Gene Autry. So love selling these. Unfortunately, by the time Christmas comes around, they'll be all gone. 
which makes me a little sad because I've sold these every single year. I go to big lots and pick them up at the end when they go to 90% off clearance and I sell them. And this year we didn't go. I don't know if we were too busy or if we forgot or if we went and they weren't there. I can't even remember, but we didn't get any. So we only have like uh, eight left, I think. $12.71 plus shipping plus the in -amend. So thanks so much, Lord. All right, let's head out to the Commonwealth cabin. You know, one thing good about being a reseller and you tell people is they'll give you stuff. And I've heard so many stories like this lately over this quarantine. People put out posts, hey, you know, I'm a reseller, I can't source. And they give you stuff. So my mom brings me stuff all the time. Well, my dad occasionally throws something into the mix and they'll ship it off or when they come to visit and they'll bring it. So this is one of those things and it's just an old lighter and it's, let's see if I can remember the name, Park. Park Lighter from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Nothing amazing, but you know what? It's over $8 plus shipping. So that's something I didn't have to pay for, and I'm really happy to make the $6 profit or whatever it is we're going to make off it. So thank you, Pop. We appreciate it. All right, this is my second Depop sale. So I'm pretty happy about that. This guy right here, we picked it up for 50 cents. It's a double stitcher. It's not a single stitcher, unfortunately. I think we bought three, two were double stitchers, and one which I think should go for the most, maybe 30 bucks, was a single stitcher. And this one, you know, with the police in it here, I thought it was uh, going to be the fastest seller of the three. I listed it on Depop, and it sold pretty darn quick, I got to tell you. And it sold for $20 plus shipping on Depop, so I'm going to have to ship this one out, and that's two sales on Depop. I think I only have like five things listed over there. And by the way, a lot of viewers went over there, not a lot, a few went over there and followed my Depop store. That's part of the reason why I got that store, to be honest with you. I didn't want anybody else to grab Commonwealth Pickers, so I went over there and grabbed it, <laughs> grabbed it first. And we have a few things over there. So thanks for doing that if you were one of those folks. So that's awesome. All right, I don't have my computer in here today. I have it up there loading a video. I just didn't bring it down. I'm shipping a little earlier than I normally do, so I didn't write this one down. I think it was like $21 plus shipping. And this is the old Thane... Flavor Waves, this is the old school ones, not the new Flavor Wave Oven Pros, and those sell really well too, and you can part them out. But this is the old school, like the first version, I think, maybe second, I can't remember. And we're selling the parts and pieces off, and I think this one went for, it was on sale, it's been around for a while. I think 21 something plus shipping, and it shouldn't be too hard to package up. Just have to find the right box. It won't go over dimension wise, it's pretty wide, but it's thin. All right, this is going out to Keith. Keith, you took a couple days off and didn't buy something. So anyway, this is going out to Keith. And these are infantry, 15th infantry. It took me a little while to do the research. I had recognized them. I had seen it before. Can do. And they came off of the jacket. If you saw the Picker's Paradise sale over on Commonwealth Picker yesterday, which would be Wednesday at this point, that was a crazy sale. I mean, unbelievable. And we found these and they were on a military jacket. And I took them off and decided I was going to sell them separately. They sold for $20. This is interesting. There's a lot of people that follow this. Keith, I don't know if you're one of them, but the 15th Infantry has a long history. I'm sorry, I'll bore you with a little history here. They go way back, like War of 1812 way back. A civil war, they fought in the Civil War. Even some Asian battles overseas. The Boxer Rebellion, which was essentially the death knell for Chinese dynasties altogether and started a whole new trajectory of their history. So the 15th Infantry has done a lot. I don't think they fought in Vietnam, which kind of makes sense being infantry. But they did fight in World War II, and that's where they're most famous for. Audie Murphy, if you know Audie Murphy, he was uh, in the 15th Infantry. And they fought, I think, in the African Theater, and they're the ones who came up from the South. So these are pretty cool and I'm happy they're going to you, Keith. So appreciate it. Hey, Keith, you also bought one of these stickers. So instead of having my daughter address them like she's been doing for the die cut, she's been hand addressing them, and she's done like 52 of them. She's been working hard, but she's happy to make the money too. So thank you all for buying these, by the way. It's very flattering for her. It was her idea to do the stickers. I actually told her, you know, I don't know if I want to do the stickers. I wasn't sure about it. And she's like, nope, you know, she loves stickers. And so she did it and y'all have supported her. So thanks so much. And Keith, we're going to put this in here with this and send it off to you. And she wrote you a little card as well. Thank you for buying my sticker, Keith. So we'll put that in there and uh, ship them off to you. Thanks so much. All right, Sonic Generations Xbox 360. I think $14 on this one. Free shipping. This came from our huge box buy, and we have made a ton already. We're well into the profit, so every time I sell one of these, it's just money on top. 
All right, I'm not gonna show you all these because it's kind of hard to look through the bag, but just the G.I. Joes, I had the video, you saw them all, and we sold most of them all off in one lot. And to be honest, they didn't bring as much as I thought. I thought for sure they'd bring 150 plus shipping, and I think they were all in for 137. So a little disappointed, but I knew that coming in, I was taking a financial hit by not doing one-offs. I think I could have taken five different figures and sold them independently, and made the same amount of money and then put the rest in an auction and probably made 50 to 80 more dollars. That's my guess. So took a little bit of a hit on it, but man, we saved a lot of time and I'm glad because there's a nice little pile over there. NFL Street and this one. Boy, how come I can't remember this guy's name? Somebody help me out here. The Miami Dolphins are running back. I think this is the guy who basically quit football so he could smoke weed. I might have that story wrong. <laughs> Somebody help me out with that. But at any rate, this was uh, a $20 game. Hey, look at that. That's got uh, the fridge on it right there for you Chicago Bears fans. That's old school. I should have played this thing. This looks like fun. At any rate, Nintendo GameCube, the street football. I sold the basketball one for a lot less. This sold for $20. Free shipping. All right. I think other than multiples, this is the oldest thing I had in the store. I'm pretty sure about that. This has been here for probably three years I told my wife they sold and she couldn't believe it. This was a retail arbitrage buy. She got on a kick for a while of getting, no pun intended, of getting things at Ross or TJ Maxx and trying to flip them. And we did flip them, but it wasn't for much money. I know a lot of you out there do that. So tell us in the comments if that's what you do. Around here, you don't find that great of deals. There's no outlet stores or anything like that. So to retail arbitrage shoes and stuff like that, there are a ton of people who make a living doing it. We just happened to not be one of them, and I wouldn't have fun doing it anyways. She did it, but this was one that took forever to sell. She bought them for like $14 and put them out there for 50 plus shipping, and they never sold. We kept dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping, and I think they sold, what do they sell for? $35.66 free shipping, so we're just making a little bit of profit on them, but I'm so happy they're gone, and it's a little ironic because a lot of high school football teams aren't exactly uh, ramping it up right now. All right, I've got a couple more sales here really quick that I'm going to show you. One's over here, and it's the Bushwhackers, and it was from that deal. If you're on Instagram and follow us at all over there, first of all, we appreciate it. But we picked this one up at our antique booth at Bell Treasures on North Bridge Street in Bedford. Had somebody go by there. They signed the guest book and bought a few things, so that's really nice. By the way, if you ever go by there, if you just tell them that uh, you are a subscriber to Commonwealth Picker, they will give you 10% off anything in our booth. Not many people do because we live out in the middle of nowhere, but that's all right. Two Bushwhackers sold for $15, I think, plus shipping, but I'll have to check that. Yep, that's it. $15 plus shipping on those Bushwhackers. And I had two sets of those guys, so I think I still have one more out there. All right, next sale was from Jane. Jane saw this in a garage sale video from last week Sunday, and she said, how much do you want for that? And I told her, it's a big bag. I think it might be like a baby bag or something. It's a huge bag. You can use it for anything, I suppose. It's got a little uh, smaller bag inside. Nice bag in great shape. I think we paid a buck or two. I think I gave him a little extra for it. I can't remember. Maybe maybe they asked for more because there's extra stuff. Two or three bucks. I haven't even looked it up. I don't even know the value of it. Jane, if you do, I don't know. But uh, I think we said 15 bucks plus shipping for this. And we are shipping it out to you. And we did that through, what did we do it through? Instagram, I think. So there's a one little string I'll have to cut off right there. So Jane, thank you so much for the purchase. And thanks for watching us. You are always commenting and being kind. So that's headed your way. Hey, one more thing I want to show you in here real quick. Before we get the homeschool hustlers to show you a couple of things, I think we had one sale there. And somebody asked me if I would box up some books and show them how I box up books. There is no mystery to it whatsoever at all. Nothing complicated. I like to use a thick box. Eh, I'll shut up. I'll show it to you in a little bit. All right, here is the gift that got sent to us from Matt Vertigo Garden. That's the eBay store. And he is a disabled veteran. Thank you so much for your service as we head into our uh, Independence Day. We do appreciate that. Lives in Utah. Sent us a set of Utah plates. I love this, by the way. Life Elevated. I love it. I have never been to Utah. I had so many friends growing up that were uh, 
either fr I had a lot of Mormon friends growing up. Matter of fact, when I took, when I went to prom in Southern California, they took a picture of us at prom and I look back and I'm like, you know what? I'm the only person who's not Mormon in that whole picture. <laughs> and the girl I took at any rate. So they spent a lot of time in Utah. Obviously I have not, it, it must be beautiful country. I hear a lot of good things, but I am happy to have these plates and we will find a wonderful place for them. So thank you so much, Matt. It is very kind of you and we'll put them up somewhere. Thanks so much. Hey, I had a quick order, not on eBay. We did this, I guess, through email. I don't think it was Instagram. Somebody saw me pick up this LU hat, and you know it's so cold out there these days. They need, they need one of these. So, <laughs> I'm kidding. At any rate, this is going off to Kevin and Anna, and they wanted both of these things, and they reached out online. So we're going to go ahead and do that for them. So thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Anna, and keep in touch. You told me a nice little plan that you're going to have for this guy. So uh, let me see it in a picture too. Thanks. All right, we have Commonwealth Spidey again. It's like two nights in a row. And something sold out of Commonwealth Spidey's uh, store. What sold? Do you know what sold, uh, Spidey? Uh, no. You don't know what that is? No. It's my buddy. And he didn't want to hold it because it was okay. freaky. What kind of superhero can't hold a doll? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I had a message from a buyer in Canada. They're like, hey, all I want is to close the hats and the shoes. How about I pay you full price and you ship it to Canada at the cheapest rate you can, which is like nine bucks. I'm like, sure, no problem. So now we're gonna have a naked my buddy and we'll try and sell that. <laughs> what do you think about that, Spidey? Uh, cool. All right, well tell everybody thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Hey, I had to make a new sheet for my Mount Plus More sales. So for $156 initial buy with $25 profit on the my buddy close, $1,780 after fees and after shipping. What do you think about that, Spidey? What? <laughs> bye bye. Hey, I was in here doing some shipping and I realized I skipped over an in a man sale. I want to make sure I get it out here. This one's going to Bruce. And he says, Love both your YouTube channels and I'm at the beginning of my reselling adventure. The videos help me learn what to look for. I respect your honesty and I appreciate it. And keep up the good videos. Please sign the in a man for good luck. And we'll definitely do that. We'll sign this guy and we'll send him off to you. And good luck on your reselling adventure. Thanks. Hey, just want to say thanks as always for joining us. And we'll see you next time. All right. Hey, I just wanted to show you a couple things. I don't fuss too much with books. These are in really good shape though. So I've got a thick box here. And I'll put a little bit of padding here and a little bit of padding here. And medium mail shipping is so cheap that I don't fool around with it too much. With a thick box, I'm not gonna bubble them or anything like that. I'm gonna put a little paper here and that's about it. So I've done my scoring here. I've, obviously I've taken off the side so you can see. So you just, this is just, I uh, can't remember how I did it. All right, there you go. So this is this side right here. So I just make this cut, make this cut, and then cut the tape right here and it comes right out. I'll save that for something else. And then I score the edges straight up from here, all the way through here, all the way here, all the way down there. And then I'll score the bottom to make it easy. This is Lonnie's knife, obviously. All right, so I'll put a little paper in here. I'll do that in a minute. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do it right now. What the heck? I'm gonna get this. I, you could cut these flaps off, but I like to put a little extra padding on these to make sure they don't really mess up here. Like that. Give it a little bit of extra. I do like to cut this extra flap off because it makes it a little extra hard to, to bend. Cut it right down along the other one. Cut it right here. Take that piece out. Now you gotta cut up this one. Now technically, we've got this extra space here, so we could put some paper here or we could 
go ahead and cut up the edges. I'll probably do a little bit of both really quick. And we'll cut up those edges. Let me see that. Cut right up there. Now I could score this here, but since I have books in here, I'm just gonna push this book up against the edge instead of scoring the inside if you push something hard against the edge you can just pop it and it'll do the same trick so then you got to do the same to the other side and since there's space you got to push the book up against the other side push that down and there we have it like that so you do one of two things two things here you can flip these things over but there's so much in here already i'm going to go ahead and cut this flap off just like that didn't quite get it, did I? That's a pretty good little seam right there. And then we'll do the same to this side. It's got two of them. I'll have to do it again. There you have it. That should do the trick. And then, a little bit of, and then a little bit of extra taping up, and you've got it. It's relatively the same size. It's not a big deal when you're dealing with medium, medium mail, but spot size still is a, is a factor in it. So weight and size, just like anything else. All right, hopefully that helps.